Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about a new discovery. We're going to go on an adventure in Space Engine and take a look at something that was actually, I guess, kind of predicted by Star Trek. Well, let me describe this in a little bit more detail and let's talk about this discovery of the planet Vulcan. Welcome to What The Math. So the date is September of 2018. The paper is, well actually it has a pretty long title, so we're gonna skip that, but the idea is that we're going to the planet Vulcan. That's right, Vulcans. Remember those unusual logical beings from the universe of Star Trek? Remember Spock? Anyway, so today we're going to be visiting the star system where the uh, planet Vulcan allegedly resides, at least in the Star Trek universe. And it just so happens that as we were looking at the star itself, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the star, um, we discovered a planet, and not just a planet, a super Earth. And not just a super Earth, a super Earth in the habitable zone of the star system. That's right, we found a planet that's about 8.6 masses of Earth in the same region where you would expect to have liquid water, around one of the stars in that particular system, known as Fori Eridani. Now we're going to go and explore it, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, the actual star system as well, because it's important to know what's there and basically why it's kind of, I guess, important. First of all, it's the closest super-Earth to us so far. The distance to 40 Eridani is just over 16 light-years. Um, this is about four times the distance to the closest star to us, and as you can see, you can actually see it pretty easily, even with the naked eye. Now the system itself, though, has three stars. And this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Let's jump to it so I can show it to you. Um, so here is what this system looks like. As you can see, there is a little binary sisterhood going on here. And there is a larger uh, partner here. This is Eridani A, and these two are Eridani B and Eridani C. Now, the planet we discovered is actually around this object, the larger of three. And this is a K-type star, um, whose habitable zone is about 0.64 AU away from the actual star, at least the middle of the habitable zone. And the planet that I guess for now we're going to be calling Vulcan is in that particular region. Uh, but it is a super-Earth, don't forget, these are not really Earth-like planets, they're more like Neptunes, and so it's a very, very massive planet. But what's cool about this particular planet is that this, this is what you'd be seeing a lot. You'd be seeing these two other stars orbiting around um, in basically the night skies of your um, planet and they would provide quite um, enough illumination to maybe even uh, create some dramatic effects on the surface of this planet as well. The other two stars that you saw just a second ago, uh, Eridani B and Eridani C, they are a little bit different. Like this one here is actually a very important indicator that there is probably not going to be life here or uh, really anything because this is a white dwarf, meaning that this used to be a star and then it most likely expanded and released a tremendous amount of energy um, as it turned into a white dwarf. And this release of energy very likely um, destroyed any kind of life that may have been on those planets. Now, that's still not 100% certain, but very likely. Uh, the last object here is a red dwarf, and uh, this here will probably stay the same for about a few trillion years, so it's not going to change very much. And because these two stars are actually binary, it's very likely that they don't really have that many stable uh, planets or really any other stable objects orbiting around them, because it's very difficult to form stable orbits uh, when it's a binary system. However, uh, a does have a planet. Now, to tell you a little bit more about this planet, well, first of all, um, it's actually relatively close to the star. It's uh, in the inner sort of uh, habitable zone. Uh, and I think the best way for me to help you visualize this is to try to recreate its orbit right here in Universe Inbox. And so here's our Vulcan. This is where it's positioned um, in relation to Fori Eridani A. And if I were to enable the habitable zone, you would see that it's actually, at least according to Universe Sandbox, not even in the habitable zone. It's sort of in the area where Venus is. 
And this makes Vulcan a very, very, very hot uh, super Earth. And that's probably what's happening here. So the temperatures on the surface are like 140, 150 degrees Celsius. This kind of aligns with the lore of Star Trek because you may know uh, that Vulcan is a hotter, more dense and more massive world than Earth. And it just so happens to be in the same system where the scientists just found a super Earth that basically meets all of those uh, qualifications. So in that sense, very, very cool, very unusual and definitely deserves a video. Now, one thing about this particular object is that, like I said, uh, the fact that there's a white dwarf in the system suggests that uh, there was a, a very, very large cataclysm that may have killed any life. But on the other hand, there's also a re relatively active red dwarf here, which also creates a lot of um, really dangerous radiation. So uh, it's probably unlikely that the planet itself is going to have a lot of interesting things on it. What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't have even atmosphere, most likely. And it most likely does not have water, and it's very likely going to be very barren and highly, highly radioactive. So any species that's able to survive on this Vulcan right here is going to be extremely, extremely strong and resistant to everything. Way, way more than Vulcans in Star Trek. But nevertheless, a really cool finding and very interesting discovery. But uh, because this is a very massive object, uh, I wanted to actually show you how it compares to Earth as well. This is going to be a very interesting object to study because its proximity to Earth means that we can definitely study uh, a lot of things about it. We can study um, possibly its atmosphere. We can even maybe try to uh, find out why our own solar system doesn't have these objects. And most importantly, maybe even find moons around it, which is going to be a very interesting discovery and definitely the first of its kind. Other than that, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. So that's right, we discovered Vulcan, and so now we can probably say that Star Trek seems to have had another thing correct about it. Anyway, on this note, thank you for watching, please subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe even click on the bell button to be notified about future videos, and consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.